G'day guys, this is Draymond here and welcome to my World Builder tutorial for Dawn of War 3. To start off with, let's create a new multiplayer map. Now this part is important because you can't change it, as far as I'm aware, after setting it at the very beginning. I recommend a playable area that's four sizes smaller than the terrain size to stop the camera going off the map or to be able to see the void. These dots here indicate the playable area and as you can see up in the left hand corner here you can only just see the edge of the map. Now there is a maximum size so I've put together a list of all the different combinations of maximum sizes. These two columns can be reversed which is to say you can put say 416 in one side and 1024 in the other or vice versa. For this video though I don't need anything that big. Now that we have our map each player is going to need three different things to be playable. Starting position shared territory, starting territory team and a map entry point. Also you will need to assign these things to each player. To do this I'm going to click and drag to select the three objects and under player assignment set them to the corresponding player. But that's not all, also need to generate the territory that they're within. To do this, territory button and use this button here to calculate the territory. At this point you can save it and export it and the map will be playable. However the game cannot end because there is no power core to determine victory. The next three objects each player is going to need is the power core, the base turret and an external gate generator. Also, don't forget to assign these to each player. Once again, this map will now be playable and a winner can be determined. To test this in game, hit save and export package. As you can see, the map showed up in the map list and it also launched without any errors. To add a resource point, find game resource point under EBS Gameplay Capture Points. If for any reason left click won't select it, as I said in another video, left click something else and then try again on the object you're trying to select. To place, right click. I've got Snapped Grid set to 4, which will help align the points. Come down to Economy and add the particular resources that you want on the capture point by left clicking and right clicking them onto the map. To align these resources onto the resource point, left click to select, hold shift and click and drag horizontally. To make this easier use snap to angle 45. These resource points also need a player assignment however they need to be set to world. To make things easier you can also duplicate objects by selecting them and holding C and then dragging to duplicate the object. Once you've added your resource points you will need to regenerate the territory. Now I'm going to save and export package and this map should be playable. If the map doesn't show up in game it'll be due to the bug that I've discussed in previous videos. There is a post on the community about it and it's due to a dot prefab data being generated causing issues. So if you navigate to documents, games, Dawn of War 3, mod source, scenarios, whatever the folder you put it in, there will be a dot prefab data file if you delete that and re-export the package, the, game sh the map should show up in game. There was a comment made that deleting the prefab data could break the map. However, I haven't experienced this myself. I'd advise you to use your own discretion when choosing whether or not to do this. As you can see, the map has shown up in game with the updated resource points. Once again, the map launches without any errors. Regarding 2v2 and 3v3, 
it follows the same format as the 1v1 setup, except you give the extra players their own starting position shared territory, their own base. Now I've had success with both giving them their own map entry point and starting territory markers, and I've had success where they share these points, as you can see here. I've tested both of these maps and they both work. The only other thing to be aware of is the teams. If you go into scenario and then teams, it'll tell you which player is on each team. Make sure you keep this in mind when you're assigning players to their buildings. As for the power core, the turret and the shield generator, just assign them to, I suppose you could say, whoever the team captain is, whoever comes first in each team. Okay, hotkeys. Middle mouse button to move the map. You can use the arrows as well. Right click is generally place and left click is select. Hold Alt to move the camera. You can use Z to snap the camera onto the object you have selected. Hold H and click and drag horizontally to increase or decrease an object's height. Once again, this is where the snap to really comes in handy. Hold shift to rotate. Some objects can be rotated along different axes. As you can see, the green circle is turning yellow when I mouse over, but the red and blue are not. On this object, however, you'll notice it can be rotated along all three axes. Although I've found that once you've rotated it along these axes, you can't use H to increase its height anymore. Instead, you can use the Edit Transform and increase the Y or decrease the Y value to change its height. I'd also like to point out that the default layer texture, being this grid, is not accurate for measurement. I always turn it off at the very beginning of my maps and use the overlay instead. So that's it for the basics tutorial. I hope it helps, and as always, cheers for watching.